Like I've been birding over 20 years, and every time I go out, I can see a lot of the same birds I've seen many times, but I never tire of looking at the same birds because you learn something new about them. And particularly learning, uh, getting to know their songs so you recognize them by hearing. Like I walk over in the green belt two or three times a week and keep track of all the birds over there, which I provide the information to the city also. And uh, a lot of the birds I'll get just by hearing them. Once you recognize the birds' songs, uh, then you don't have to go see them. That's a black uh, chestnut back chickadee there. She's got. And that's a red breasted nuthatch. Yeah. Their call is kind of ank, 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 if you ever hear it. Like I say, the important things for birds, the, the three things I always emphasize is food, shelter, and water. And we have a lot of food with a lot of these native plants and the highbush cranberry and the salalberry. But then we've added our own feeders, which is additional feed for them. And we have a couple of water uh, basins so they can take baths. And then, like I say, we've made areas where there's uh, shelter for them by providing branches that they can hide under. We've tried to make it as wildlife or bird friendly as possible. Yeah, that's a dark eyed junco there. It's a male because it has a very black head. The female would be a little grayer on the head. Yeah, the, they, they like the uh, sunflower seeds and the other regular mix. It's always best to have diversity in whatever you, you do. Even in your life, it's really good to have diversity. But if you have, you know, trees, small shrubs, larger shrubs, because different uh, birds are attracted to uh, different types of trees. A lot of birds will feed on our ground feeders, and others will feed low in the bushes, and others feel, will feed up in the middle branches, and others will be high up. So you need to have everything from small to big. Well, just, just grass, particularly if you, if you put uh, pesticides and so forth on them and, and kills off all the worms and the insects, you won't be getting the birds. And if you have a lot of grass, the, the birds will feed on the ground, but they like to have some immediate shelter in case some hawk or something comes through. So they like to have trees nearby, so it's a big expanse of grass. I mean, they're reluctant to be out in the middle of that because they, they can get trapped and, and not, not get away. So it's best to keep the back patches of grass smaller, but have trees around for, for protection that they can hide out in. Oh, well, there it is. Yeah, it's a house finch. If you plant uh, native plants and trees and shrubs and put up feeders and so forth, you can attract birds. I encourage people to, to learn the birds and keep a backyard bird list. I have a bird list. I, every month I keep track of the birds that I see each month. And, and so far I think I've got close to 70 different species I've seen overall in my yard over the 20 years. And I generally see about 35, 40 or more in any one year. Yeah, individuals can do a lot. I think more people are aware that we need to protect the environment. And so anything that they can do to enhance the environment and keep it the way it was, don't cut down everything, you know, and, and clear everything off, but try to keep native stuff, plants, and so forth around to keep it as it was intended to be.